start the meeting now. Um, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, we're really excited to be here at the high school today. There's a lot of exciting things going on here. We all know that the young people in this town are the lifeblood of this town. It's very important that we train them well, we care about them, nurture them, grow them, and hopefully help them to stay in the community and help the community thrive for future generations. Um, and so that's, that's what everyone here has in mind to do that works at the high school. Um, and Lynette has been working very hard, and of course the superintendent, Christy Medina, also working very hard to nurture those pathways and give them new opportunities. Um, so I want to turn it over uh, to Lynette. Welcome to Raton High School. Um, we're very excited that you're here. I know we have a lot of questions usually during the business core meetings. Sorry, I'm going to find my mouth. The business core meetings about um, internships, younger kids staying, lots of different things. So I just wanted to um, invite you guys in to the schools so you guys could hear about what we're doing. Um, so you guys can take this back and... So I'm Lynette Simpson. I had to look at my name for just a second. And um, um, I'm the Raton High School counselor. And um, so here's my information. There's my phone number directly to my office. And then I put Miss Starr, Jolene Starr. She's our principal and her information. And then Mrs. Medina, our superintendent and her information. If you need to get a hold of us or you have questions, um, we like for you to call and, and ask, and then um, we can, and if we don't know, we'll find out for you. Ms. Vindini, do you want to say something first? For COVID and COVID hit, and it kind of slowed us down a little bit, and so we're trying to pick up steam again and bring on more programs. Lynette's been instrumental in helping us um, start some of the programs and, and keep them going and working with kids and enrolling them, and so we just hope to, to get better every year. We know that it's a need in our community, especially with a lot of our kids. Some of them do not want to go to college. They would like to do a trade or a skill, and we want to be able to offer those opportunities for those students as well. So um, just welcome you, and thank you all for being here today. OK, so just a little bit about Raton High School I wanted to share with you. So we are a 7 through 12 high school. And um, so we have, seven, we have a 7th and 8th grade school. We have a 9th through 12th grade school. And this morning when I was thinking about it, I was enrolling some kids in Santa Fe Community College. I thought to myself, actually, we're a three-school school because we have um, a lot of kids doing dual credit. And so we're a high school campus, a middle school campus, and really a college campus, to be honest with you. Um, so we have 343 students. Um, we have 46 students that are graduating this year. And um, I put up there our graduation rate, because um, I know that's usually a question that everybody likes to know. However, I just want to preface this with the way that New Mexico does our graduation rate is very convoluted and kind of crazy. So if a student comes from us from Albuquerque and say they have zero credits and we get them graduated, they get points and we get points. But if a student from ours goes to Albuquerque and they lose them, then we get penalized and they get penalized. And maybe they were on track when they left us, but we'll get penalized. So it's a very convoluted kind of score. I don't think anybody anywhere kind of knows how it really works, but you know. Um, but we are always, I will tell you that I, we don't lose very many kids um, unless they've moved out of state or moved to, you know, moved somewhere else. Really, we, we do graduate. Um, so we have a lot of students that attend summer programs. We have the Hobie Boy State, Girl State. We have students that go um, to the New Mexico State Police Youth Academy for a week. Um, we, have the, um, we have a new program this year, the NMSU MIT Artificial Intelligence Program um, Camp. And then we have the MTU training bus coming this summer for trade, so we're excited about that. Um, our graduating students do a lot of things. They go to four-year schools, two-year schools, um, trade schools, military, and the workforce. La I included this 96% because last meeting we talked, um, somebody said, how many kids at the, uh, how many students at the high school have jobs? And um, I just, ha I happened to have done my uh, senior interviews like a month or two uh, before that. And I asked them, where are you working? 
and um, they could tell me. So I just wanted to tell you that 96% of our seniors have jobs, but I know that more of them have jobs. Um, we have juniors and sophomores working. I am handing work permits out to seventh and eighth graders. They're going to the NRA to work. So our kids are, they're busy and they keep themselves busy, but they are working. And um, next year we're gonna be two way for sports. So any, other, any questions so far? Do you have an idea of what jobs people are working, what the kids are working this year in general? So we have some that are doing our near peer tutoring. They work at all the fast food restaurants, all the hotels, um, kind of anywhere and everywhere. We have some that um, are vet, their vet assistants. Um, but yeah, they're just kind of the hospital. Yes, we have a couple at the hospital. And so they're just working Good. everywhere. I feel like, um, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was a job. But you know, like, oh, I had, and I have somebody working, they're filing for their mother at one of the companies, but they're like, she has so much filing. So I didn't, you know, so it's kind of funny. So um, at Raton High School, and I will say that career in tech is kind of like, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of like my baby and I just want to watch it grow and grow and I get real excited and something happens and I'm calling Miss Medina real fast. I'm like, I just found something out. And I just get really excited about it. But these are, really where our current tech education programs come from. So uh, we work with Santa Fe Community College. They're, they're um, our like sister companion school. That's where most of our students take their dual credit through. We have High Plains Regional Education Cooperative, REC downtown, and they sponsor our drone technician. And this year we had five students get their FAA unmanned pilot license. Um, and so that's kind of a big deal. Um, where if they go to school, they can take, they can get their drone and they can do that on the side as work. Um, through the film, I just found this out when we were meeting with Milton that through the film industry, they can be hired because they have FAA, that FAA license, they can fly where a lot of people can't fly. So they can actually join the union and do that. But I have had other phone calls and um, like, do you have somebody who can take some film shots? So they can get their name out there and they can use that as a side job. And one person called and they were ready to pay $120 an hour for like three hours worth of time. And I was like, oh, how do I learn how to fly a drone? <laughs> I can use that too. So uh, we also use Mesa Lands Community College. They are um, another school that we work with, um, with Chris Forrester and they do the wind turbine um, renewable energy certificate. So they learn how to climb those towers when you go back and forth to Pueblo or like Clovis and you see the wind towers, they're climbing up those and learning how to get those. We have two this year. We have two spots every year for Raton High School and we have two graduate, we had two last year and two this year graduating. Um, and so if other schools don't fill their slots, they usually will call us and say, do you have someone else? And I can find someone else to slot in there. And then of course we have all of our in-house opportunities that I'll share with you. Okay, so at Santa Fe Community College, um, so this is kind of an interest, we have to do everything asynchronously. So, because we are the furthest school from our home college, we're three and a half hours out. And so why do I say that we're kind of like a college campus here? is because I am Santa Fe Community College here. I do the recruiting, we do the, we do the advising, we do the signing up, we do the registration. I'm the bookstore. We just kind of do everything here because they can't just take a piece of paper and go to campus and go and you know, let the testing department test them. I have to do that here. So, um, and it's much harder, just to let you know, it's much harder for our students to have to do everything asynchronously. Means they fit in their it's whenever they can start doing their classes. And um, so we find time during the day, we give them time and resource to work on it here. And you'll see, um, the, if you were here earlier, we had some kids in here and they were all dual, dual credit kids. Um, so how dual credit works is that you can start taking college courses at the second semester of your freshman year and uh, you can start with one course and if you're successful, then the next year you can take two courses each semester and then we bump it up to three. Um, and so we have actually, they can, so some of their classes are 
dual credit means they can earn high school credit and start their college transcript um, at the same time. So if they take a US history course for a semester, they will get a full unit of high school credit for that class. So it moves them through the high school graduation requirements a little bit faster. Um, and so sometimes we have, well, we have had students the end of their junior year who have taken dual credit that they have, like they finished their high school credits. And so the um, beginning, their senior year, maybe they're just taking college courses. The great thing about it is that it's free. So the only thing that charges is a um, science lab course and that's about $20. But if you think about, if you think about zero, I mean most classes are about, if you think with fees, tuition, everything else, $1,500 um, a course. So for free, um, that's pretty good. Um, so students can use, it, can get a significant amount of credit. Here are the programs that we have right now that we offer. We have phlebotomy and community health, um, community health worker. That is part of our healthcare career pathway program. And um, our nurse facilitates that. So for they start their junior year and they take a couple of different, they take other courses. And then their senior year, the first semester, they take phlebotomy. And then they go out to our hospital and they, um, they do all the sticks for you. So if you have to have your blood drawn, the second half of the first semester, maybe beginning part of the second semester, you might go out there and it might be one of our students who are doing those. Um, we had five this year. We had a pretty robust uh, program before COVID and then you know COVID shut everything down. And so now we're building back up. Um, so we had five, we'll have five phlebotomists. We'll graduate them at the um, end of this year. And next year we have nine. So, um, We'll have that. We have nutrition, uh, business administration, and accounting specialists. Those kind of go together because um, they overlap classes. Um, alcohol and drug abuse counselor, um, application development, which is computer programming. We have early childhood development, which we partner with our near peer program that we have here at the Rat Tone Public Schools. So they take classes and then they go down to the little schools and they teach them. They get a little small group and, and teach them. Um, we have criminal investigation, and we have film technician training. And Miss Ann is our um, in-house professor, Santa Fe <laughs> Community College associate professor. Um, and so, let's see. Oh, and we have liberal arts. So liberal arts is like the first 32 hours that almost everyone needs if they're going to a four-year school, two-year school. You have to take those English nine. You have to take some science. You have to take some history. You got to take a, you know, be fine arts. We want you well-rounded when you leave college. So that's what um, those are. But we do have, just to let you know, so we'll have the five phlebotomy and community health workers or um, graduates. We have one criminal investigation graduate this year. And I think no, next year we'll have two early childhood. So we have a whole bunch coming up, but I was trying to think who's in there now. Do, uh, is it possible for a student here in Red Town to actually receive a B, BA or a BS in Red Town without having to go to a campus? Can they do that starting here and then continue online courses to actually get a Bachelor of Arts or a science? You can, yes, it's absolutely possible. Okay. Online schools, since COVID, online schools just bloomed. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like COVID, but I actually, when I came back to work and I found out what was happening at Santa Fe and all these classes started going asynchronous and online, that was, it was like a silver lining for me because, and for Rat Tone High School, because before I was calling going, hey, can we have this class online? Hey, can we do this class? And they're like, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. But after COVID, everything went online. So then it just like opened the opportunities for Rat Tone High School students. Yes, now Santa Fe is only a two year school. Um, and so they would have to, but there are definitely tons of opportunities for them to do that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, REC, the building, I, I told you they do our drone technology program. And so that's free. We have five drones at the high school right now. And, um, and so it's offered to two students from each high school in our area. We were lucky if another school, again, can't fill theirs, 
we can fill, we can, I can put the word out and I can get students to come and say, I wanna be a drone operator. So we were able to fill five of those spots this year. Um, it's a four day classroom course and then they have some study days that we do with them and then they go to, Al we um, transport them to Albuquerque where they take the test, the written test and a flying test and then their little license comes in the mail. They have to be fingerprinted, they have to do the background check, they have to do the whole thing because it's, if you're gonna fly something in FAA airway space, you have to make sure, they have to know that you're on the up and up to do that, so. Do you have any hardware classes for electronics that they can learn to build a drone? We don't at this point. Is it possible? Anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> anything is possible if I can find the resources to do it. All right. Yes, anything is possible. Um, so with Mesa Lynn Community College, that is our wind turbine program, and we get two students a year to do that, and they receive all the safety equipment through the REC program, and so if they need boots, we buy them boots. If they need um, safety glasses, we buy them safety glasses. Anything that they need to be able to climb that tower and do what they do, we provide that for them. Um, and then Chris Forrester is our liaison for that program. Where is Mesa Lynn located? It is in Tucumcari. Yes. And we filled out the graduation paperwork this morning with both the boys. So I'm very proud of that. All right, so in-house, what do we have here that we do in-house? Um, we have, we are beginning our Pro Start 1 and Pro Start 2 programs. We're building those programs right now. Um, Amber Cita Sintas is um, the, the pro, you know, she's the program director for that, the teacher. And that's where we do, she makes sure that they get their serve safe course. And then this manager, serve safe managers course, this one is actually through Santa Fe Community College. And it has, I think, just like a $20 course fee. So they'll be able to take that in uh, Pro Start 2 and have that. Um, they're looking at doing some competitions. And um, they, if you know anyone in the food industry that wants to come in and do some presentations, they would love to have them. So um, there's her phone number and her school email. And um, in the back, they did all of the prep for our, um, for our snacks today. They wanted to show off their knife skills with their, um, so they were doing that. And it's very delicious. And um, I love when they start cooking in there. It smells really good right here. And I'm always lured out of my office. And I'm like, what's happening in there today? So, and they share. And they have jam. So they made homemade strawberry jam. They canned it. They had some ladies come in um, and help them can. So, and they're right there. If you would like a jar, they're selling them for $8 a jar. I've already sampled it many times and it's very good. So um, that's great. I'm really glad that we're able to build this program up again. We have, um, our kitchen is a commercial kitchen. We have commercial freezers. Refrigerators, they follow, they have to follow all the commercial kitchen um, guidelines and food safety rules, so. Yes. Are they for hire for events? They are hire for events. That was my next thing. Thank you so much for leading that segue. Um, so we wanted to show off for you what they can do. And um, they, um, they provided all the meals for our SAT boot camp that we held for a week and it was it was just phenomenal. So if you need someone to cater something for you, please call them and they would be, you know, they'd be more than happy to show off some, some more stuff for you. When you say call, are you talking about? Call Miss Sentis, yes, please. 3541, Raton High School Culinary, yes. Okay, so we also have our welding department and our teacher there is Eric Sines and um, his, email right there. And so these are, let's come over here. These are all of the things that they do. Um, Oxyfuel welding, arc welding, MIG welding, TIG welding. I don't know what any of that stuff is. <laughs> I just asked him, what do you do in order to um, So they do cutting, they have a plasma cutter, um, and then they have the CNC plasma cutting. That's the part on the computer where they program it in and they have a big table. We can go see that if you'd like and it just cuts out these really neat things. Um, they're always looking for donations of scrap metal. He told me to ask you that. So if you know of any, they will be willing to take it. 
And of course, um, they're always looking for presenters. If you know someone, he'd love to have you come in the classroom. But we're also looking um, for internship opportunities for both of these programs. If you have, if you need a welder, we um, are matriculating them to be, you know, the fourth year seniors. They could use, you know, places to go and do some internships. That really helps us. And part of our completers talking about that is that our, so when we start a program, I know everybody thinks, oh, we can get them out to you right away. Um, it kind of does take us a couple of years to get them through, like um, with welding. We can't just send them out weld or welding one students. We need to make sure they have those skills. So it takes us a couple of years and then we can start getting out welding for students, our completers, out to the community. So I think that is one of the biggest misconceptions is that when we're trying to um, start a program that it's not immediately that there are kids flooding the market in Raton. We have to make sure, you know, like for um, our, say a business administration, they need to go through all the coursework. It's going to take them a couple of years to get through the coursework and then we can get then we can send a call out and say, I need some, some place for these business admin kids to go out and do, you know, work their magic because they have this education. So it does take a couple of years when we start a new program, two or three years to get you guys the kids that you need out there in the community. Okay, let me, we have more. Okay, um, we also have our CAD program, which is our computer-aided design program with Mr. Mares. Um, so they do all the beginning CAD, 3D modeling, they do wireframes and extrusions, they're doing uh, 3D printing with their um, Iligu, I think that's how you say it, Iligu program, and then they use the AutoCAD 2023 program. Um, and they, and again, we're looking for places for those students. We should have some in um, CAD 4 next year to um, start placing. If you, we need, you know, where can we put them? With engineers, architects. So if you know someone, you can call me and say, I have a position. We would need someone that we can apprentice. And when we put them out in the community and we do an internship that fourth year, we get more money back because, um, they see, the state sees them as completers, and so that we're, we're, we're making that circle back. Um, and so we are also in, um, have, we're start, we have right now, it's a wood shop. We're hoping that we can turn that into a construction wood shop. And so we actually have an opening. I just wanna put that out there. So <laughs> um, if you know someone who has a construction background, and would like to run the wood shop, would like to be a teacher at Raton High School, then um, I direct you to Ms. Medina and the Central Administration Building across the street. So please put in an application because um, that would be really exciting um, for us to have somebody who can, you know, do that part of it. We do some amazing things right now in the wood shop. Um, if you go online and you to our Facebook page, you can scroll down and see some of the amazing projects that um, that Mr. Daniel and the students make here. I am always Im totally impressed. I try to buy things. They don't want to sell me things. I mean, they're, I mean, I try to like sneak in after hours. They have things locked up because they know I'm going to come get them. Um, they really are phenomenal. They do an amazing job. Um, I. Yes, sir. On your CAD program, is that generic CAD or is that architecture, construction, or does it go into the technologies? Do you know? It's these things. Yeah. I'm not a CAD person. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm not the CAD person. Um, but I, I think it's more geared toward architecture, to be honest. Um, because the kids that we have had come out of that program have gone on to be architects, I happen to know. So, um, yes. But I, I'm the bus, I'm behind the scenes kind of girl, you know. I just organize it and like, okay, we got to do all this stuff, and then these people all make the magic happen. That's not me at all. It's all these people so that work in this building. I just wrote it down. I'm like, come tell me what you do, so I can tell other people. We'll talk about but yes, Mike is the man. 
Do you have a, a, another question? I'm sorry. I do. Yes. I was wondering, uh, do we have the employers in our communities that are able to then hire these students that have these wonderful skills? Um, so I think we're getting there. Um, I want to tell you, during the construction, I mean the construction, the career fair that we have um, in November, I only ask Rat Tone Careers to come up here. And there is never a shortage of people who want to come in and participate. And I only ask Rat Tone Careers to come. I mean, a couple have come over from Trinidad. But um, I try to focus on Rat Tone because one, I want kids to know that those jobs are here because they don't honestly see them all the time. Like you don't see an engineer, you know, or you might see him, but you don't know that he's an engineer or they're an engineer um, until they come up here and you go, oh, you're an engineer. I, I had kids say that. I didn't know we had architects in Rat Tone. I didn't know we had engineers in Rat Tone. I didn't know I could do this or that in Rat Tone. I want them to know that so that um, if they want to stay here, if they want to come back, you know, leave, get, you know, and then come back, that's great too. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of my motivations of trying to get people in Rat Tone to come up here to present. Great. Yes, sir. Have you contacted Karen Stearns at, uh, yes. You know, yes. Take a little? Um, I have not. I have not, but um, he's on our list. I think he's on Mike's list to, to contact, yes. Um, any other questions about this part? Did you want to highlight the uh, welding students? Oh, I did. I'm sorry. So our welding students are right back here. Um, Mr. Uh, Sines brought in some projects um, um, for them. And that, uh, the, uh, um, fire pitch. Sorry, I couldn't say. This fire pit right here is actually for raffle. So um, that's a, they made this so you can have a pit. But this is ten dollars a ticket. I thought they were going to bring me back some tickets so I could sell them, but we'll we'll find some. Mm -hmm. If you would like them, you can contact any FFA member or welding shop member. They will gladly sell you a ticket. Um, but I'm hoping mine gets pulled. You know, just to, <laughs> just to put that out there. Um, let's see. And I'm sure if you ask them, they would probably make you one and sell you. You know, to sell you one. I had someone ask me about that also. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, and in the back, there's the art project. Um, Miss Medina from Adult. She came through and she was like, and I said, yes, bring us some art. So she brought some of our students' art pieces, and they, we have some amazing artists at Raton High School. We just have some amazing kids at Raton High School. I will just tell you that. I am never ever i'm always shocked about how they rise to the expectation of what we ask them to do and what the, and their talents are always so amazing and in the back um our i think that seventh grade they were building bridges out of different material and so they brought those down also um and then for co-op because i had some people ask about co-op the last time um holly mayfield is our co-op teacher and Right now we have 14 students in co-op, um, but again, they just seniors can be in co-op. That doesn't mean that that's the only 14 students that have um, jobs. Um, most of them are here all day, and then they go, um, and then they go after school and on the weekends and are working. So again, 96% of our seniors are working, but 14 of our students are in co-op. They do earn a, um, elective high school credit for that. And, um, you know, these are some of the things they have to do. They have to jump through some hoops. And um, so I just wanted to let you know about our co-op program. How would you and get signed up with that program if you wanted to take a student? Um, so you can either call um, the office, call myself, call Holly, and if you have a job that you're like, I, I need a student for a job, you can send us the information and we can email it out to students. And then they can get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. We have that happen a lot. So again, do you guys any questions? I have a question. Okay. Do you have a fashion design program or any kind of home economics as far as sewing and teaching that skill? We used to, and we don't now. Um, 
So that, that's something that we have thought about and we have talked with Anne about as part of the um, film problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that's something that we can work on getting in and we're trying to do that. It's really just finding, we have to make sure that people have the teaching license to do that here, that we have space, that we have different things. Um, we have budget, we have materials, what are we going, you know, uh, curriculum, all of those things. Sure. Yeah, but we can definitely. Mm -hmm. Miss um, Starr came in in the back. She snuck in from a meeting, so I just wanted to um, let her wave her hand at you. She's the principal. If you She's don't know. the principal. Sorry, <laughs> I did introduce you at the beginning, <laughs> but you weren't here. I apologize. I was kind of in a... Yes. A while ago, I attended some adult classes here. Do you have anything like that still going on? Oh, we don't, but we have talked about it. Um, nighttime courses. Yeah. It gets thrown around. It sometimes just becomes a logistical thing. Yes. Sorry, I know that is loud and it's right over your table. So. <laughs> I'm going to jump in just real quick. I handed everyone out. This is um, our profile of a graduate. So when we began this work, we really wanted to tie it all together. And as we started thinking about that from high school, and thinking about our students and as they make their way from seven to twelfth grade, we wanted to make sure that they left with some important skills that we felt were valuable. And so we went through multiple community meetings with different groups of people coming together, really defining what that should look like. And so this is what was developed. Um, if you look at it. We want to make sure that they have the skills to be motivated, open-minded, confident, and independent, adaptive, and flexible, and connected. <coughs> so you'll see some pieces and skills that are tied to each of those. So within all of our programs that we offer with uh, our curriculum, we try to make sure that those align and tie to make them better prepared uh, as they get ready to leave us and go out into the world. So we are listening to our community when they say we need more police officers. So I start. I called Santa Fe Community College and said, "How can we get a law <laughs> pathway going?" And so that's how the criminal investigation pathway kind of came about. We need some counselors. So we, you know, that's these are all things that they can do asynchronously, um, and then move forward. Uh, let's see what else can I tell you about my wonderful school. <laughs> Well, do you want to want to go on to the questions? Yeah, if there are okay. no other questions, we could just go into this. Um, okay, sounds good. Oh, that before you yes, leave? sure. Um, you mentioned there is no adult education level, but I'm wondering if, in terms of workforce training, uh, some of the things that you provide would be excellent for also for adult workforce training. Have you considered? Taking on that responsibility? <laughs> That's a lot. So, yeah. Um, yes. So, I don't mind helping someone. Like, all the asynchronous opportunities that we have through Santa Fe Community College are absolutely open to every single person. So, they can get onto Santa Fe Community College, they can apply, and then, um, and I don't mind like helping them and, you know, saying, this is what you need to do to get onto classes. And, um, I can't do everything just because of the setting that I'm in, because I'm a high school counselor. Um, but um, if somebody in the community wants to take that on, I'd be more than happy to partner and resource with them. Absolutely. As you said, that might be something that our library, our local library. Absolutely, we could partner with that. We can always talk about lots of different things. Yes, we have CCI working on things like that too, right? And we are partnering with CCI um, to build um, some of the skill soft uh, classes and courses into our pathways so that when students leave, um, like for with the phlebotomy healthcare skills pathway, that they have, um, we have them taking um, like how to, um, 
I can't, oh, I had them all. I was just thinking, there's a whole list. And so they're taking those so they can put those in their portfolio also. So when they go to, into a job interview, they can say, this is what I have. Um, these are all the certificates that I have. So we are partnering with that because it's a free city resource. Again, I you know, work at schools and my budget is close to this, zero. And so if I can pull, make magic happen with as little dollars as possible, then um, I'm all about it. So if you know resources, grants, or anything that I can use up here, let me know. I would be more than happy to, you know, just bring things in for my kids. That's all we're doing is trying to bring opportunities for kids here. And um, I mean, and they do have a lot of opportunities. When you think about Boy State and Girl State, um, this year I'm sending five kids from, uh, from so 10 kids to those programs where other schools, like higher um, other schools, they may have to do a whole vetting process, application process for two slots. Like say to Manzano High School. That's a huge high school, they get two slots. We get two slots, but I called this year and said, I have four kids that wanna go. And they said, well, we had this other school that isn't gonna use their slots, send them. So I got, I'm getting to send 10 kids. So that's kind of exciting. And also when, I'm always so happy because in August when they come back, I have people that call and they say, oh my gosh, send us your kids again. We love your kids from Red Town. I hear that all the time. They don't have to call me. I didn't call them and ask them, how are my kids? They call me and say, we love having your Red Town kids come down. Um, our kids go down in there. Um, like, so they go to Boy State this year, but next year they go and they're a Boy State ambassador and they take them back every year. So, or they call me and say, do you have anyone who wants to be an ambassador? We love your kids. So I'm very proud of that fact, that our kids are well, uh, you know, connected throughout the state and they're, you know, they go out from us and they're amazing. So they mind their manners and do what they're told. They're good kids. So, yes. So we've done a good job parenting them here. All right. Thanks. All right. So. All right, so as usual with the core meeting, we want to do our a core brainstorm here. So we have our worksheet I'm going to hand out. I started handing it out. Um, so you can work on it individually or in small groups, and then, again, we'll just come back and kind of go through these questions. Oh, thank you. Um, so, so really, it's just thinking about what you've learned here and uh, how you, as a business or organization, if you're not a business or individual proprietor, sole proprietor, support uh, Raton High School? Uh, how can you make use of these career pathways to improve your business or create a succession plan? So those of you who were at last month's meeting know that we were talking about succession planning. We have a lot of older owned businesses in the community that are, we've seen shutting down, shutting down. We wanna keep those open. We wanna keep growing our businesses. So what can you do to think about using some of the young people as a succession plan? Um, would you be part of an internship program or the cooperative program? Um, what would you have interns do for your business? Um, and in the new school, what kinds of features would you like to see to support education and businesses in Raton by educating our young people? So those are the questions. So we'll have about, maybe take about 10, 15 minutes to go through those and then uh, we'll come back. Uh -huh. Everybody's being shy today. Yeah. Oh my God. I know, th I know this table's not shy here. <laughs> okay, so why don't you come up here, just so we can, again, for the people who aren't here, trying to, you know, get this recorded. So as uh, far as how can you as a business support RHS, we've had so many different businesses in our lifetimes <laughs> that it would be hard to even pin something down on how we could help other than maybe uh, mentorship and uh, information, you know, an information highway. How can uh, you make use of these career pathways to improve your business or create a succession plan? Honestly, with us, it didn't, didn't apply. You know, we don't need a, well, I could probably do a succession plan and I have sort of done that, but um, it really wasn't a thought as a career pathway Honestly, because what I do, except for the journalism part, because that's always necessary and needed and, and uh, used, but as far as the fiber arts that I do, um, 
it kind of goes like this. You know, sometimes it's really, really popular, and all the kids are learning from grandma and <laughs> what they love doing, and then it just kind of goes by the wayside. It's it's not considered, you know, relevant in our in our lifetime. However, um, for Raton, I think a manufacturing of this kind of thing would be fabulous because it would also create jobs. So when you're talking about fiber arts, I have tons and tons of fabric that I would be glad to donate. <laughs> so, all right, and then um, the internship, I think with the journalism, the Ratonian, I definitely would appreciate having interns for that. And I think that that's something that the high school could really um, start focusing in on as well. Journalism, media, you know, information. It is something that is always going to be relevant. I think yeah. Mentorship. Yeah. Right. So that would be more our line, that table right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, as far as number four, we did have a, a great interest in that, and so we thought that it would be very important for Rat Tone Schools to get community input on the development of the RFP for the design of the new campus. Because when we uh, had all those meetings about, you know, getting this going and trying to get the school bond passed, and it passed wonderfully well, um, I think that there were so many wonderful examples of things that could be done with the new schools. And I'm so afraid, all of us are a little bit afraid that we'll end up with same-o, same-o. And we don't want that. We want something new, innovative. We want something exciting that the kids and the community are going to be uh, really excited about and, and uh, looking forward to going to that school. So I, I really think that uh, we want a lot of community input when it comes to the RFP for that. And um, we need to give the students more opportunities in all the modern technology. I mean, as much as you possibly can because it changes so rapidly. So we need to just really stay on top of that because that's where a lot of the jobs will be. However, it's extremely important also to consider all the trades because we still need plumbers. We need electricians. We need carpenters. We can't all have a PhD in something, and you know. So we do need the trades as well. So a good, a good blend of all of that would be excellent. So that's... That's our wisdom to impart. <laughs> I did our group for InBank, and I just wanted to first say thank you to the schools for everything that you do for our community and for us. My is a little bit more of a success story. Um, the first question is, what can we do to support the Rat Tone Public Schools? We do many things from donations, sponsorships, coming to the high school for career day and participating in that, and we strongly support the Career Pathways program. One of the things that InBank did a couple years ago, worked with Lynette to have a type of like a boot camp training for the students that were graduating, students that didn't want to go off to college and wanted to stay here and join the workforce. From that boot camp, we successfully hired two students and they have both been with us for the last two years. Both of one has just been promoted and another one is up for promotion very soon. So I want to thank you for doing that. We do use... Yes. <laughs> We do use Lynette as a resource um, consistently. When we are looking to hire, we do reach out about this time looking for seniors that do want to stay around if they're interested. And she has always helped us stay connected through that way. So we appreciate you for that. Um, we would be interested in doing the internships and working with somebody. And if we have any opportunity for co-op, we would love to do that as well. And we would work with the students just to get the day in the life experience of a banking professional anywhere from the retail team to the lending staff, anything like that. So we are interested in that. And I think that how we could continue to, you can continue to support us with the new school is just continue with your career pathways program and the opportunities that you do provide for the students. My name's David Wentling. Um, I currently have my own business called Conserve First, and I have worked in the energy efficiency industry for over 45 years. 
Um, I have done research. Um, if you build a house today and you build uh, using radon construction standards, I was a part of that research to actually write that standard um, many moons ago. Um, I have um, worked with housing authorities and trainings on energy efficiency so that low-income weatherization programs have been trained. Um, I think that we need to get our children um, and our adults interested in energy efficiency, uh, both in the school systems and in, in, in the general public. Um, I, I do testing, but I can't do it here. I can't do it here because no one wants to test their house because no one can afford to fix their house. Um, I, I've done three houses in 15 years um, here in Raton. Um, but prior to that, um, I, I've gone down to Santa Fe to assist uh, doing many uh, evaluations because the state building code has just been adopted that now says that you have to have energy efficiency standards and one of them is air tightness standard and that air tightness standard says that if you're in the Albuquerque Santa Fe area you need to actually test the performance of the building to see if it passes its air tightness only in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. I approached the state saying, why not the rest of the state when we really do need it? And they said, we don't have the personnel. We don't think there's enough people out there trained and certified to meet the needs throughout the state. And I said, did you ever survey? Did you ever actually have workshops to train people for the job? And they said, never thought about it. Okay? So, I, I offer myself here to the school. I worked with Mark Honeyfield um, many years ago. Um, I came in, I talked to students. Um, I took them to one of the school buildings that's uh, across from Legion Park. We actually blower tested the building and pressure tested it so the kids got to see what it is. Um, we, we talked about how to fix the house. We actually climbed around in the attic and started doing things. Um, and then my time was up and we moved on. What's happened to the building, I don't know. But I did do some training with the school. I think it was successful. Some of the students enjoyed it. Um, I've also done trainings for contractors in the area, which I'd love to be able to get the students involved in. And it's called the Green Advantage Training, which is a very general thing that talks about uh, saving energy and the environment and the likes so people have a context. Um, I've done that training. And uh, again, I've offered myself to, to do those kinds of things. Um, there are op opportunities here that we can support the school. Some of us are not trained, certified to be teachers. Yes, we're, we're trained in the, we have cert certificate, certificates that say we know what we're talking about. Uh, and we've proven that we're in the top 90 percentile range of, of our knowledge base. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. school systems also require you to have licenses and all kinds of good stuff to teach. So there's limitations, so we all have to work together with uh, obtaining those things and finding out the pathways to getting those kinds of licenses. Um, there's a lot of trades people around here, I think, that could use uh, the, um, the skill base that's here. Uh, we've got a lot of students who grow up on ranches, and those ranch kids know how to weld. They know how to build. They know how to run a saw. They know, they know their way around, okay? They've been doing it all their life. They're not certified, okay? They come to school, they get certificates to show that they, they are knowledgeable in this. We need to keep going with that, and we need to be able to say, you know, here's the efficiency side of things, because by golly, we all know, we need the plumbers, we need electricians, we need the carpenters, we need the builders, we need the roofers, we need the contractors of all kinds, okay? These kids all have the skill. Now we've got to teach them not only that part of the business, but now we have to teach them the accounting side, the business side, and all the other bookkeeping side of running a business so that they themselves feel comfortable starting off and saying, yeah, you know, I want to work for somebody, but I want to start my own business. And they have an idea of how to start the business. So I really think that all of that needs to come together. And, you know, how many times do we hear the thing, you know, kids are graduating, they don't know how to balance a checkbook, you know? Uh, that's been going on for years. I mean, even when I was a kid, you know, it was the same thing. And I really think that we really need to get our kids up to speed in that direction of running a business and, and knowing what a, a balance sheet is and being able to understand what assets and, and liabilities are and be able to go through that. And I think there's an opportunity there. 
Um, and I think if all of us in our wage shapes or forms that we are comprehensive when we talk to our kids um, and we are mentors that we share all the different aspects of what we do because there's a great article about um, personal administrators. If you are a business, you have somebody in your business to um, pay your bills, do your research, schedule different things for you, but who does it for your own personal life? How many times do you have to go home and you've got to schedule your mortgage payment or you've got to schedule your utility bills or you have to schedule uh, somebody coming in to work on your house or whatever? These are administrative skills that we have to do personally that we don't get paid for, okay? And these kids all need to know that they're going to have to have the same set of skills. But guess what? If you work for somebody, you might get paid to do it for them, and you get that the skill base to do it for yourself, you know? So personal administration is a really big thing that I think we all have to, to share with the kids, and they have to learn. And I think working with Zia Youth um, and, and working with that age group that's working there might be another group of outside of school being able to help them and bring them back in. So um, I think that um, all I can say is if we all keep offering ourselves as mentors, um, not just instructors, but also as instructors, um, I think it will go a long way to helping the school and helping the community uh, continue to grow. So. Well, along with that, I think also not only a mentor, but <laughs> just to get visibility of something outside of that company. People see Raton only, and, and they build their life on that. But when you bring people from outside, and they can show you something that's not just from here, but also somewhere else, they get more hope in that. How many communities have a Nobel Prize winner? Right. Just saying. Right. <laughs> Thank you. a different um, perspective because I've been a mom of um, a child who finished high school at 14 who had to sit in the library and get an associate's degree on his own just because he couldn't really leave the school, leave the house, um, to being someone that ran a community college. I ran, a vo I ran vocational schools and I ran a four-year university. So everything that you guys are saying makes sense to me because I've lived it. Um, I'm really proud of the students here in Raton. I see a lot of kids who love working with their hands and are very good with their communication skills and their, their friendship that they build at the school is just amazing to me. Um, I have ditched the, the, the grown-up kids and I've gone back to the babies <laughs> because I find that if I can make them fall in love with learning and reading and opening up their imagination that that makes them fall in love with school and then they can grow up to be anything they want to be. So I volunteer on, two, on Wednesdays and Thursdays at Longfellow and what I do is I bring guests into the school about the dentist, the police officer, the fire department, um, about the young man that builds all those motorcycles and bicycles, um, people who, the artists from the and the museum came. Um, we had um, the hoax came and taught the kids sign language. And it's funny because I'm at the grocery store and they're signing to me. It's like, hello, Miss Lenore. It's like, oh my God, you guys learned something. Yeah. So um, I'm stuck on the babies and I'm hoping that you know, their love of learning will come up all the way up to high school and then eventually there are the mayors and doctors and the plumbers and electricians of the future. So. I'm just really happy to kind of expose them to different things in town. All right. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming. I think this is a very important conversation. I know, you know, I'm very new to this community, but of course I came down here because of education and because of workforce development. So I'm so excited to, that so many people are interested in this and um, we hope to just continue it and see it grow. We definitely want to support the technical fields, as was mentioned. Um, so anyway, this was a really great conversation. I hope we can keep having this conversation and talk maybe further about what are the next steps. If you want to become a teacher or a license or an internship, how do you actually do that and have like a practical workshop on something like that? So 
Anyway, thank you all. Um, I hope to see you next month where we're going to be at Phil Long Ford. Um, so Phil Long Ford is offered to host next month. And the conversation is going to be about marketing. Um, and Patricia, you're still planning on, yep. OK, and Patricia will be presenting uh, things that she's doing with Grow Raton, oh, wait, sorry, with Explore Raton, sorry. <laughs> Too many names in my brain. Uh, and, and also with some of the new, are you going to talk about the county stuff too? OK, so she's got some great, exciting new programs. Um, and then I think Melita, is all, I think she left, but she's going to talk about Placer AI and how we can actually look at traffic moving in and out of our communities to see how we can capture that better, when people are coming here, where people are going, and how we can kind of capitalize on that marketing-wise. So that will be the day, it'll be on a Tuesday next month. So it'll be the day after Memorial Day instead of a Monday. Okay, so that'll be May 28th and we'll send out invitations. Uh, what time again? 11. 11. Mm -hmm. All right, well thank you all so much for coming. Have a good rest of your day.